G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel where I like to teach you how to paint and just show you that you can do it. All right, so I want to bring you over here and just show you what I have on my canvas. That way you know what's going on in my mind and you know what to put down on your canvas. So get on over here. Right, here we go. So I've got my horizon line about way up above halfway, right across there. That's going to be the sky, and we're going to have some water there. So I'm going to paint the water on and then put the wave in front of it, and the wave's going to come. See my horizon line? It's important. I want this to hover underneath the horizon, cock up a little bit there, a big window of lowness down here and a big coculation of highness way up there above the horizon line. And the bottom of this wave is going to be momented down into the wet sand, which is here. That'll be the wet sand and this will be the damp, dry sand, okay? So I want to get all those facets in here. So I want to start with the sky. So bring you down here. Now, I'm not going to do too much blending like clouds and that, so I'm just going to get some soft titanium white. I call this craft paint, but it's not cord craft paint. That's just what I call it. It's There it is there. That's the bottle. I buy a big bottle of it, and I've got it upside down in a cup because it keeps the paint ready to, see, pour out as I need it instead of shaking it down there like a mongrel trying to get it there. Now, I want to get my brushes over here. So I'm going to damp the brush first. This is where little buddy would normally say, why are you damping the brush for? That's because you don't want to introduce a dry bristle brush into the paint. Just, I'm going to load this up. Oh, I'll, I'll bomb it on there. Bring you up here. And let's get the sky area primed up with this there all the way along now I'm going to push that into the tooth of my canvas now I'm using a good quality canvas here it's taken me ages to find the canvas that suits my habits. Everyone has different habits and ways of doing things. So what's good for me might not be good for you, but I've found a good canvas, and now I just want to stroke that left and right like a pure gentleman I try to be, just to get all the lumps and bumps and goobly gloops out of there, and it's a nice, thin, even coat. No retarder in this. This is just to make the blues glide across the canvas a lot better now i'm going to simply wash that brush now french ultramarine watch what we can do with this stuff we can get a decent beach sky out of this and what i want is some uh proper titanium white which is probably in the other tub here actually i won't even use that i'm going to get some of this French ultramarine, watch what we do here. And I want to mix a very light bottom of the sky. Get some more of that because I haven't got enough and some more of that. And when it goes onto the canvas, it's going to be lighter as well. Hopefully this, this will give that atmosphere down in the horizon there. There we go. I'm happy with that. Probably a little bit more of that French. French has some magical wonders of changing colours. I'm going to use also the dioxine later on. It's got some magical changing colours. So I want the bot. So I want the bottom of my sky in this lighter blue. So I'm just going to push it across there and then let it fade up. I'm pushing it off the brush now and I've got somewhere because if anything I like my horizons to be lighter than the higher part of the sky to give it that sphere look now I'm going to wash this brush so I'll bring you down here to where my pots are whether you can see them or not I don't know but at least I brought you down here all right and then I've got another one to rinse wash and rinse and I've got another another one there for me Bigger brushes. Okay, now I want to pick up the French Ultramarine on its own. 
and get this onto the sky. I'll get my camera up there. What's going on? Okay. So I'm going to start from here, get it coming up to the top. So that white's helping it glide. I'm going to push it in just like so. It's going to be darker than what's below. Now see how what's below, it's quite a dramatic line showing the difference. I'm going to start teasing that now and merging that and getting a, a softer gradient. I'm crisscrossing it, figure eight, infinity strokes there, back with the left and right stroke. And I'm going to keep doing that until I'm happy with the gradient of the two colours. It doesn't matter if there's some lines in it, it's a sky. I'm not going to put clouds in this sky. So now we've got a sky coming over us. I'm going to just darken the very top of that now with some phalo blue. So get some of this. Not too much. I'm going to wash that brush again just to get the contaminants out of it. And me hydrate of water there. Pick up the phalo blue. And I've deliberately left a top bit undone just to get this up there. There we go. Get a bit more on the brush. And now I want to gradient that into the French. So letting it wear off the brush. Get on some of that tape up there. Let it wearing off the brush. And now I want to just gradually blend that down into that French ultramarine and then finish it with left and right strokes and we're going to get a decent realistic sky full of lovely warmth i don't know if you can see it on the camera but you can see some kind of violety purple in there that french ultramarine puts some beautiful warmth in the sky when you think the sun's just set it down over here somewhere it's beautiful i'm liking that Get some of it down here a bit more. There we go. Come back to the... So I'm coming... I was down there. Now I'm coming to the tip of the brush just to push that on. There's no paint on the tip of the brush. If I come to there, see, I'm loading that onto the canvas. So I'll come back to the tip of the brush and I can blend that through. So being aware of where the paint is on your brush and how you tilt it and hold it, it all helps in your journey. All right, we'll leave that alone. That's the sky done. All right, that's dry. I can put some tape where I want my horizon line. So I want it about here. So what should I do here now? I've done plenty of different things. I've got to prime the water like I did the sky, but I'm not going to put the white to the tape. I'm going to put it... Just beyond the tape. Now, what do I need? I need maybe the, where's that brush gone again? I'm pretty much using the same brush all the way through, aren't I? So I'm going to grab some more of this craft white just to prime up the water, which is about from here. Get a bit of water in that. And I want to get it just to that tape, but not on the tape, okay? Just to about there somewhere. I'm getting the brush on its edge just so I can, can cut it into the edge of where I want it to be. Just like that. There we go. Get some more of that. And then finish... Now, the best way to follow my videos is to watch it and just see what's happening so you can set yourself up. Now, I want to get my finger and just wipe any heaviness away from the where it's meeting. Okay, beautiful. There we go. I've just got to wash that brush.
and I want to get the ocean water now, which is going to be quite dark. So where are we? Mr. Who knows how to pronounce? I had trouble pronouncing that when I first started. Pithalo blue, but we all know it's phthalo blue. I don't know what origin it's from, the name, but someone might know. Now, I'm getting my brush loaded up with the phthalo blue. Coming from my tape, getting this to the tape so no white's going to bleed there. That way when I take the tape off, I'm not going to have a white line of paint on the edge of my horizon. I want it to be sharp and realistic as I can get it. Okay, camera's on there. And now I want to bring this just down. This is a different blue to the sky. I don't want it the same blue as the sky, otherwise it'll clash. And then this can come down to about there. Not worried about that. It's going to be a wave there. See, that's why I said when you watch the video, you'll know why I'm doing what I'm doing. And when you start to follow and paint along, you'll know what you're doing as well instead of thinking, oh, what's he doing now? Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on, what's going on? You, you'll, you need to know what's going on. And that's how you learn from video tutorials is watch them a couple, maybe a couple of times even. Now, it depends how detailed you want to do that water. I'm not going to detail it that much. There we go. Chew back up. Beautiful. Now I can take the tape off, can I? I think so. Watch the, watch the horizon line there. Nice and sharp. There's no white ridge of paint there. That's because I didn't take it to the um, tape. I just took the coloured paint to the tape. Now I'll give that brush a wipe again and I'm going to start priming up the rest. I didn't do this because I didn't want it to dry, so I'm going to do that now. And it's up to you how long you have a break for, have a cup of tea and whatever. So when you know the procedure, you know where you can and can't have a break and bits and bobs like that, all right? It's that easy. Now I'm going to get the rest of this soft body titanium poster paint, student paint, craft paint, and we'll get all this... I'm not drawing anything yet because I want to merge some colours with this. So I'll get that to me blue, all the way down here. Now I will have the colours in the description below after the live's finished. Oh, what happened there? I'll wipe that off with there. Wipe that. I had a big blob of paint there. Okay, there we go. And then that can just go into that blue there. Now, I've got dioxine purple. Come down here. Well, you could just leave that as it is. It looks like a good white sandy beach, doesn't it? Now, where's my... Watch this. We've got yellow ochre. I'll grab a couple of piles of that. And we've got... Dioxine purple. Don't need too much of that. This makes the wet sand and those ref reflective colours in the sky in the wet sand. Okay, so firstly, I want to do the wet sand, which is just the yellow oxide, yellow ochre. Start from the bottom. I can still see my line where the wet sand's going to be. So I want to bring this, get a bit more darker there, vomit on, massage it into that white. Come up to there where I want it. Get a bit more. Now what I want, before I get a bit more, I'll wipe the lightness out of it so I can reapply heavy coloured paint to my brush again. Look at the difference there, what that just done. And then, see, I've got heavy colour there again. That's what I wanted. So if you didn't just know that by watching the video, you will know if that's happening to you, what you can do. All right. Now, that's our sort of sand. I will put some dry, whiter stuff on that later. Come down here. I'll just wipe the brush. Now, I'll grab me yellow ochre. Now, the... 
deoxine purple. I'm going to brush mix it, but as I brush mix it, I'm doing it on both sides of the brush. So everything's going to be even. I'll put a bit of white into that because I don't want it really dark. Don't put too much in where you've got to overkill the um, yellow ochre. And you will see the difference on the painting, how this is reflecting the sky colours in the wet sand. Get a little bit more of that maybe. Now, like I said, I've brush mixed it. I'm making sure everything on the brush is even as well as what it is there. Otherwise, if I don't have it even here and it's all blobby, I'll get surprises on the canvas and you don't want any surprises like that. Okay, so watch this as well. To get long legs, I've got paint from the tip to here. To get long legs out of a stroke, as you move along, you tilt the brush to feed the paint to the canvas. So watch this. I'll come from here. It's starting to run out. So I'll tilt it. It's reloading and it's re-pushing it down. Boom. All the way. There we go. I've just added a little bit more dioxine to that because it's, I feel it's not enough. Now what I'm going to do is just try and get the edge here on a bit of a shape that I want. Looks a bit iffy effity at the moment. But see, a little bit more dioxine won't hurt. There we go. It's a simple painting when you look at it at the end of it all, but okay, it looks a bit funny in my camera. I just had a look, but on real life, it's looking good. I'll take a photo and put that as a thumbnail as well when I've edited the video. Now I'm just going to wash that brush and grab the yellow ochre again so as I can get the darkness within our water, and I'll show you what I mean. So grabbing the yellow ochre again, get some more of that over here. I've just used the one brush so far, it's just a flat, looks like a half inch. And this is going to create the, the dirty, it can blend in with that colour there as well the dirty white okay so i just want to get this in so what i'm doing i'm pushing it and scraping it and just letting it kind of flick in its own way just artistically just where the blue and that beat wet sand is meeting and i'm just kind of stitching them together with this just letting it make its own behavior i can see a bit of green taking place which is fine because green is in water green is nice so I'm just twisting and flicking and just getting some kind of darker shadow vibe there for my wave when I'm ready to do it. And you'll see at the end why I've done this. A bit more down here. Okay, just flicking it up there. Not too much. Now I'm just going to finesse this bit here so there's no hard, see there's hard edges here. I'm just finessing that just winding it through like so. And this will be a fun painting for anybody to do. Now the wet sand and that is nowhere near finished, so let's get onto that before we do that wave. Okay, it's looking good. It's going great. I want to get another brush and some good quality titanium white. Not that craft stuff. It's too soft. It's got no body. This stuff has... Oh, I 
don't need that much. This has got more grunt to it. So I'm just going to grab this and before me sand dries, I want to just get some lighter colours, just probably glancing across that first. There we go. Just so it's not a, a one-dimensional colour. It's got light hitting it. And I'm going to do it in that kind of fashion, just sweeping. The paint's still wet. I don't want to... If I was not filming, I can dry it to the degree I want. But I don't have that opportunity here. That's it. Just a bit of light hitting there. Now I want to grab that same brush. I'm just wiping that dirty white out, grabbing the white. And where the wet sand is meeting the dry sand, I want the bottom half sharp and the top half can be scrambled back. I'll show you what I mean. So I'll do a bit at a time. So I'm just going to get this along there and then scrumble bits of white back into that. Where are we? Get some more. Want it, that was a bit light there coming across and then getting some more there and then just scrumbling it back you can wipe the bulk off if you've got too much on there and just sitting it down into that damp color so you're not killing the damp color you're just gingerly highlighting it Too much on there, so I'll take it off and then sit it down. And my horizons here, I'm doing these brush strokes in that manner as well. I unfortunately see some beginners, it'll only be a matter of time before they fix it, is they're doing these too much up and downish, and it's making their paintings looking a bit iffy effity at the moment until they conquer that part of their journey. Getting there, getting there. Where are we over here? Just slowly pulling it back into the damp colour there. Now I want to get a script liner and grab my dark colour. So let me find my script liner. Where am I? Um, oh, they're all the way over here. Let me find my script liner. I'll just dampen it. I'm grabbing the dioxine purple and the yellow ochre because I want the slightest. Use my mouse stick. I want the slightest darkness under here. It's not wet enough. Okay. Very slight. See, I'm barely touching it. What I want to do is grab my white again and some of the, here we go, where are we, where's the French, this one here, I think that one's dry, yeah, some of the French, but I want it white French, so getting the good quality white and I want the glare on top of there now, I'll just show you what I mean. So mainly here, 
I want to get a lot of glare here before I get my other wave put on there. This is just building up to the... Now, I could have, would have, should have dried it, but it's all right, I'll get there. Now I'm going to mix the white for this wave. I'm going to mix it with its dark, medium, and light values. It's important that I do those three for it. That's the way I want to do it, and I'll show you in this video how I do that and why I do that. All right there, that's enough of that for now. So what I'm going to do is find the remote for that aircon. I'm sweating like a dog here. <laughs> now I've got to find the brush I want to use for that wave uh, brush 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 I will use I'll just a concoction of anything so what I'll do I'll come over here and I'm going to use my good titanium white which is over here And I'll grab some pure titanium white. And what brush can I use? I'll use, I'll, I'll just use anything to mix it up. I'll just use this filbert to mix it up. Now I want some of the, this color here-ish. Just to make, there's my camera on it. I better bring you over so you can see. I want white, I want dirty whites. See, the sand is this colour, and where it's the water is all smashing onto the wet sand, it's bringing this colour through it. Hence, that's why we need this as the dark shadow of our water. Okay, I think that makes sense to everybody. I try and get it understandable so the simplest person even can even understand it. It doesn't matter how advanced you are, at least you understand what I mean. Okay, that'll do. So I want me water. This is the darkness of me water coming. I'm going to pretty much hide all that yellow oxide that I put on there. That's just the undercolour for this. I want the bottom kind of slathered and straight, though, like because it's harder. And then this is going to kind of just get our... Where the pure white's going to be, I do not want this, okay? This is just for the depth of all the wave. It might look a bit weird at the moment, like, how's that going to be a wave? But wait till it's finished and um, you'll get a gist of just what the guru's got going on in his mind, okay? Now, I'm also getting rid of some heavy, hard edges there. And is that going across the painting yet? Yep. Come across here. Now, what I might do is step it down to give it some dimension at the bottom here. I'll show you what I mean. So I might come down here a bit, just, just slightly a bit. And now I can go a little bit lighter. Where the water's going to be now, I'm going to use pretty much, I'm going to dust it on where the, the white's going to be. So pretty much here, a nice bit up there somewhere, just dusting it on. Like I said, I want a nice blue window there. And then the rest of this can start calculating right up there somewhere. Okay. I'll just wash that brush. I want to grab the white with just a little bit of that in there now, the yellow oxide. Get some of that in there, not too much, but not too less as well. So hopefully the camera's picking that up. So 
So we're gradually going lighter with that value until we get to the pure white. There we go. Yes, that's looking white, kind of yellowy white. Now, I'll start over this way. I'm controlling the bottom where it's hitting the sand first. I could probably, I'll leave that brush. I'm going to grab another flat. This one do it. No, it's too fat. This one will do it. Grab some more of that on a flat, just so I can control the bottom where it's hitting here. I want it to kind of fade into that colour, leaving some darkness underneath. And with a flat, I feel I can get the... Um, body of it hitting the sand properly. There we go. Now I'll put that down, grab that other filberty brush and start making our wave. Crashing up. And having the darker colours behind, a bit of the water colour there, it's just allowed the depth of the wave to show within the painting, hopefully. I want to just look in the monitor there. Yeah. Can you see in there how you've got that yellow oxide working as the water all turned up within the where it's hit the wet sand? It's dug up all that sand and it's within the white colour. That's why it's there. Come right up here with some of this. And the actual pure white is what's really going to bring this home, make it look good. Hopefully, I'm pretty sure it should work out anyway. This is pretty much still two-dimensional at the moment. I've used no retarder in this painting. I don't feel I've needed it. It's just a lot of scrumbling. The waves coming off the painting. I don't want to stop it there. You need to continue off it to, for it to make sense at the edge of the painting, I feel. Now, there's a lot of blurt, blurt, blurt there I could see. So I'm going to kind of de it, if that makes sense. Get rid of some of the horizon line there. Here we go. And now this is where I can stop if I was not filming. I could have a cup of tea and get a vanilla slice on the saucer there and cut that up and eat it with a fork and analyse. It's important to analyse your work. And this is where I can work out before I put the pure white on, I'll pick up some of that darker colour and do I feel I want a pocket of it a bit darker within there. I can do that. So I'm going to do that now. And do I want another pocket of darkness maybe, I don't know, coming down here somewhere? Kind of creating coves within the chunk of white paint there. A bit there. There we go. Grab the other colour again. And if you need to, just kind of sit that back a little bit. And that's why it pays to analyse work. Now I want to grab the pure white again. Where did that go? Here it is. This is the pure white now. I'm using the pure white. And I want to just gingerly get the pure white. At the front here.
and move right along to this side here. And then we can build the wave off this. This is pretty much the base of the wave. I'll grab a round brush if I can find one. I've only got a massive big one. I will use a round brush. Where's it? Oh, here we go. I found one. I found one. So I'm just going to put some more white onto the palette down here. Grabbing pure white onto a, a round brush. Load him so he's not blobby, hopefully. Okay, I've turned the air down. I just saw someone writing about the air. Okay, so now I want to capture, well, not too heavy there. I want to capture the whiteness of our wave now, leaving the very dull colour where it needs to go, feel where you need it to stay. So I'll get this way at the top, spitting out there. And you can also, like, watch this. I'll concentrate a big chunk here just as an example. Just concentrate a big chunk of white here. And then leaving some of it down the bottom. When you come up to the sky area, you want less on your brush. So start from the guts of the wave. I'm twisting as I go so I don't get any uniform stamping on there. And I'm just getting some flicks of water in the air as well. Can we get a bit closer? Where are we? I'll come over that dark bit a little bit and then leave it all dark there and then what I want to do is bring a lot of this and concentrate on this side of that dark pushing that dark bit back so it's like a big dark shadow within our wave there I'm just getting some glare into that wet sand there, just like that. I'm putting paint on the brush, wiping most of it off, and just pulling down some glare into the wet sand. Just letting it scratch. Where else are we? We'll put a bit here. But I'll get it a bit more bright. It's not bright enough there. I can hardly see it. There we go. We can get some of that maybe there, maybe, or I don't know. We'll get some of this dancing across there. And I want to grab that white just to fix up the other part, the lighter area of where the dark shadow is on the beginning of that wave. I'll just show you. So I'll quickly load my brush up. 
getting the pure white. And I want to fit that dark down a little bit more. It's given a bit more of a lip out there where it needs a little bit of light hitting the front of it there. Just getting some dioxane purple. sign this and then I'll reveal it let's just see how good it looks in a matted frame I want to thank my patrons and channel members who support me every month it is much appreciated I'll reveal it That's a mat, if anyone doesn't know, for the frame. And we'll wait a frame on it like that. There you go. It looks okay in a frame, doesn't it? That is not too shabby, and it's something a beginner can learn and make it your own because I know you can do it. Well, that was exciting and fun. I enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give me a comment. And just remember to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.